wholesome Christmas show for children and old folk. And here's the man who'll spoil it all, a croaky bloke from Stoke. <laughs> Well, thanks to our Christmas fairy, and if you think that's impressive, the Have I Got News For You Christmas show has got Peter Mandelson. <laughs> yes, it's a special panto edition. On my right, we have team captain Mother Goose, although maybe Duck Whittington would have been more appropriate. <laughs> Both ends of a pantomime cow, and their special guest, an actor, who in the brief gaps between pantos managed to squeeze in the World Heavyweight Championship in his ringmaster costume from Goldilocks and the Three Bears at the Milton Keynes Theatre, Frank Bruno. <laughs> On my left is another team captain. Last year he refused to dress as Little Bo Peep. This year he refused to dress as Snow White. It's grumpy. <laughs> Alongside him is Widow Twanky. At least I think that's what they said. <laughs> and their special guest, a man who claims to be the only Iranian comedian in the world. A bit of a surprise there for Tarani Corbett and Max Muller. <laughs> it's the genie of the lamp, Omid Jalili. <laughs> David, David incidentally has been out in central London buying us all Christmas presents. He had a bit of trouble parking though, his butler couldn't get his loose change in the parking meter. <laughs> Right, round one, and it's Sporting Bluff, where the teams try to work out who on the other side is telling the truth and who are lying through their teeth. We begin the show with a spiritual question. David, Jonathan and Frank, we take you to Arsenal Football Club in this season of goodwill to all strikers. And there's Bloomberg for them now with the back heel, and there's fair cap shot, that's 2-0. The error. Superman. You saw goals by Dennis Bergkamp, Patrick Vieira and Robert Pires. Now, Arsenal have recently enlisted the aid of the Christian Church in their push for the championship. But how? Gary's team. An exorcist has been consulted in a bid to cure Dennis Bergkamp's fear of flying. A Catholic priest has been brought in so that Patrick Vieira can take communion before every match. A local vicar has been persuaded to bless Robert Pires's underpants. <laughs> Arsenal got a lot of French players now, even my limited football knowledge, I know that. Yeah. Down at Highby now, do they chant, Qui mange tu le pays? Two gloss pasta, two gloss pasta, go mange tu le pays? <laughs> Gary, my ass ass friendly do you look tonight. He looks like a turd. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid as well. Right, I was going to say, I didn't know whether to shake your hand or flash your way when you first came out. Was it you said that he, he had his pants blessed, his wife once blessed? A young, virile French footballer would not wear wife once. He'd have a thong, maybe. <laughs> but Frank, you being a boxer, what do you favour? Um, the, I think the old boxers, you know, it's got a lot of room in the space. You do actually wear boxer shorts? Definitely, so you can hang a little bit more better and have a bit more fresh air. Yes. <laughs> you, don't like to be, you don't like to be bothered? Um, sometimes a black and decker likes to be bothered, yeah. but when you're wearing boxes, there's not room to um, swear around. I know it's a family show and it's 12 o'clock. It's Christmas. Right? Frank, can I just point out, you know, yeah. I am genuinely a fan of yours, you know. Yeah, that. And not just your panto work, Jonathan. I mean yeah, your boxing you. as well. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Don't but do you remember, <laughs> you all remember, <laughs> you all remember the night you fought Tyson, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And do you remember the choices we had to make? You had to make whether you wanted to stay up late and watch it, yeah. get your mates round, pay for the pay for you, stay up late and watch it, or, you could record it, you could sleep, and watch it in the morning. Yeah. Which I believe is what you did, Frank. Definitely. I'm not Chris, you can relax. I don't threaten to kill you. <laughs> I think we need to defer to you, our beautiful one. Um, <laughs> we think it's the underpants. So you think Rory was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yeah. Yes, Rory spoke the truth. Robert Perez has had his underpants blessed by his local priest at the instigation of Perez's mother. He said, I kept the same pair of pants on as long as we kept winning. I've been like that for the last seven years. <laughs> Mrs. Perez sent her son's pants back and forth to the local priest for seven years without washing them. It was the only package in the French postal system with cannot bend written on it. <laughs> Robert Perez said he was stunned when he first came to England by the brutality and ugliness of British football. And that was just Martin Keown's face in the arrivals room. <laughs> now, in the spirit of religious balance, Gary's team, your question is about fundamentalist Islam and football as played in Afghanistan. 
Now, when the Pakistan team visited Afghanistan sometime after this, the entire side was arrested by the Taliban's religious police. So, David's team, what was it the Taliban objected to? The Taliban arrested the Pakistan for team for wearing shorts. The Taliban arrested the Pakistan team for not wearing beards. Mm -hmm. The Taliban arrested the Pakistan team for kissing each other after scoring a goal. We covered that game. Did you? Yeah. The pundit was Allah Hansen. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm Mark Lawrence from Arabia. <laughs> Omi, can I ask you, as our representative from the, from the Middle East, yes. what, what are the tenets of the Taliban faith? What are the attractive qualities? If I wanted to become, if I wanted to join the Taliban gang, I, I, don't, I don't know what they call it. You'd have to change your outfit for a yeah. start. <laughs> and I'd grow the beard and stuff, but I mean, what, what, are the, what do you have to adhere by? Do you know roughly? I don't know people talking about the Taliban police, and uh, I always thought that's some kind of weird tribute band. <laughs> <laughs> But sell it to me. I mean, do I get a discount on electrical goods? I mean, do I get 20% off my local harvest? Well, what are the attractive points? <laughs> Joining the gang, the Taliban, the crazy Taliban guys. There's a very big, uh, big business in Brian Blessed lookalikes. <laughs> Lots of Afghanis saying, How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> But am I right in thinking they're very strict out there? They're very strict. The Taliban is, yeah, the Taliban so is So, Gary, if you're out there playing football, you should be very careful because it has an entirely different <laughs> meaning. <laughs> so what's it called that when all the women have to wear completely covered apart from so, their eyes? Well, there's two, Chador or Yashmak. Chador. Does that mean porn mags in that country? It's just eyes, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. readers' eyes. Readers' eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Shaved eyebrows. <laughs> they're not real, they're oh. contact lenses. <laughs> <laughs> That's the opposite of our magazine. It's only the eyes that are blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> they just get the negative of our magazine. <laughs> What's the other one? Beards. Well, kissing. Kissing. Mm -hmm. right. Football. Did you ever kiss when you um, were a footballer, Gary? Um, only if it was a really good goal. <laughs> <laughs> so never then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be something to do with Arab scumbag. It's got to be to do with Arabs and beards and... You've got to played an Arab scumbag in a film, haven't you, Hamid? I've, I've been typecast as Arab scumbags. Although I did have a departure in the Bond film. All oh, right. Where I played the second Azerbaijani oil pipe foreman. <laughs> <laughs> did you get paid departure. by the letter for that role? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's uh, shorts. You think it's shorts, Gary? Is that what you're going for? Yes. So I'm... you think Frank was telling the truth? Let's see if you you're right. Short? I think it's beards. Right, too late. It's right. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Frank was right. Earlier this year, the Pakistan team were arrested at gunpoint because they were wearing shorts. They were all rounded up and had their heads shaved as punishment. For a while, football was banned altogether by the Taliban and replaced, this is absolutely true, with public executions and mutilations on the pitch every Saturday afternoon. You can see the hilarious outtakes on anti Taliban sporting bloomers. <laughs> Afghan society is now so repressed that if a woman shows so much as an inch of flesh, she is set upon by a bearded fanatic. Mm -hmm. It's an idea they got while watching Rory on Field the Sportsman. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points. <laughs> and Gary's team have three points. <laughs> <laughs> David's team are looking good and full of Christmas cheer. Not bad for a mouthy fop and a silver-haired old dear. By the way, Gail, if you get cold, I've got a nice big soft cuddly jersey that can wrap itself around you over here. <laughs> I thought my udders were straining at the leash. <laughs> Stop me, I'm lactating. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, round two, unfamiliar territory for Frank. Uh, I didn't know Frank was We're going to play What's Going On, especially for you, Frank. It's boxing. You're so kind. That's all right. Thank you. So what was that all about, David's team? Is that the only way that uh, the BBC can afford to have boxing on TV? It's filming a couple of middle management guys slugging out in the <laughs> <laughs> When you thought Tyson, am I right in thinking that uh, 
Because everyone knows that when he fought Evander Holyfield, he took a chunk out of his ear. Yeah. And I remember I think you said that when you fought him in a scuffle, he actually bit you as well. Um, when I rocked him the first time, he had a little nibble off my um, left... Um, what can I say? Um, tip. Hello? Oh, tip. You went down to your bosom, actually? No, down there. That, no, now, no, I don't. Now, can I just gentlemen. check something? Did he go straight there, or did he work on the other erogenous zones first? <laughs> I've been told you shouldn't leave straight for the breath. You should if blow I in the ear first. If I, wasn't, if I wasn't that way inclined, it would have been excited, but I weren't excited, so he'd just stick to the chest trunk. What is the deal he's got with ears? If he ever fought you, he'd be munching for a month. He'd <laughs> <laughs> be his own family over the face. <laughs> <laughs> I found a buffet. <laughs> I think that was a grudge match between two of the Midlands top photocopier salesmen over a long-running toner dispute. <laughs> Not a million miles away from the truth. Oh. Is it really well, it's city from the, It's like city of blocks, office, is it businessmen? Mm. I'm going to give you three points for that. Well Christmas. done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a tournament held in London between businessmen from the city and New York's Wall Street. That fight was won by Brian Williams, a 54-year-old fund manager from Hertfordshire. He now goes through to fight Pam from accounts. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, those city whiz kids by day and boxers by night aren't the only people who have a second job. Rory McGrath used to have one too. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, a Christmas carol for you, but what do you make of the unusual setting? What, what football team is it, Gary? I don't recognise the script. That was Barnet, I think. Was it Barnet? Barnet, Barnet. 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 I think that's Barnet's uh, <laughs> version of the New Zealand hacker. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle your shit, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Is it something to do with improving defending techniques? You bring on a piano and take off Philip Neville. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because they're on a grand a week? <laughs> I'm always happy with a groan. <laughs> I don't know, hello. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> what about a moan and a scream? <laughs> I don't know much about football, but that piano was clearly offside, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> You're almost with us, aren't you? <laughs> I think this is basically um, football's new kind of clean image. Mm -hmm. you know, cause I, actually, I've been doing lots of um, anti-racism comedy workshops for Millwall Football Club, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's great, because we've got lots of different ethnic... Work. We had with us um, an Indian bingo caller, which is great one. She said... Uh, uh, hot, hot Vindaloo, 22. <laughs> Chutney, writer, Papa Dom Nan, who's at the door? 44. Very <laughs> good. But I think it's part of... Um... Uh, import, export, cash and carry. Send by truck or send by ferry. Acha, send it by freight. 88. <laughs> There's so much hair either side of me, I feel like the other one in ZZ Top. <laughs> <laughs> the poof. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, a, there's a new philosophy in football that if you educate your players, they can express themselves better in football. So you give them more, you give them ballet classes, yoga. This is actually music appreciation. I'm going to give you the three points. Yes, well yes. done. The answer is that Barnet Football Club have included piano lessons in their training programme in order to help the players' coordination. Barnet are nicknamed the Bees because of their black and amber kit, and also because they're always dead and buried by October. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points. <laughs> and Gary's team have six points. <laughs> A little dash of magic now, a little hocus pocus. First up in our third round is that twat from Football Focus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, Gary, have a look at this. Live from Greenland, it's the annual Santa Olympics. Here's the opening ceremony, and we've got two events to show you. One is the chimney descent, there it is. And the other is the ho-ho-hoing competition. Oh. 
But what other events can you name? There are seven in all. If you get three, you get a point for each. Isn't there a gay Santa Olympics <laughs> where they go up the chimney after a little goblin? <laughs> Tonight, you cheeky little goblin, didn't they? I remember last Christmas, actually. Well uh, done. <laughs> and he's an ex-footballer, you know. <laughs> all of you, you are all playing to stereotypes, and I'm afraid I am leaving. Oh, yes, I am. Am I just talking about um, reindeer racing for what is that one? No. Nope. Sleigh racing. Present wrapping. Mm, sort of, I'll give you that. Present arranging. Yeah. Bird stuffing? Nope. Soft, soft thigh, mm, you're a nice child, kind of... You're on your own there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Jonathan's with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could have had Christmas tree decorating, present arranging, Christmas carol singing, quality of beard, waving at children, <laughs> milk and biscuit eating, and rather bizarrely, impressing an Eskimo child. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the eventual world Santa champion was Denmark's Jürgen Rusland. But for a bonus point, can either team name the public figure voted International Santa of the Year? Oh, either team. Okay. Nelson, Nelson Mandela. Mandela. Correct. Well done. One point. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. Actually, that makes me feel a lot better. It was Nelson Mandela. So Santa was my dad wasn't lying all those years. <laughs> Despite the light-hearted image of the Santa Olympics, it's actually a tough competition. For many Santas, it's their only way out of the grotto. <laughs> David's team! <laughs> We've got some games for you too. These are the Potato Olympics held annually in America's Midwest. This is the mashed potato tug of war, and here's the mashed potato wrestling. There are 11 other events, a point each for any of the others, up to three. Gary, you should commentate that. Mash of the day. Hey! <laughs> Getting a round of applause for that joke, that really is the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> Thank you very much. If I'd have said that, I'd got a groan. That's right. Well, let's just yeah. try it, shall we? You say it, Gary. Yeah. No. <laughs> we all hear him say it, don't we? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Where's your career, Gary? Behind you. <laughs> There was a nasty incident in the potato football where someone chipped the keeper. Habba, habba, habba. So we're thinking of events that could take place in the Potato Olympics. Is That's the idea. Oh, I'm just reminding myself. Potato sack, sack race. race. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. Oh, right. so kind. How about... That's all right. Off the top right. of my head, that was... The triple lump. <laughs> One lump or two. How about getting, your three, jacket potatoes, for getting the jacket potatoes out of the Olympic flames without burning your fingers? <laughs> ooh, ah, ooh. Yeah, I, know, I know what burning means. I'm just trying to be in a life Is there a downhill skiing event? Uh, yes, there is a downhill sliding event. Wow. That's fantastically good, yeah. Sliding on mashed potato down a hill. Wow. How about peeling the spud? Potato peeling's right. You've got your three points. Yeah. Wow. Put us out of our misery. Well done. Thank you for that. Yeah, could have had potato bobbing, gulping a plate of chips, potato sack racing, potato sack fashion, potato strongman, find the object hidden in mash, potato peeling, potato carving, hunt the golden potato, mashed potato downhill sliding down a 50-foot ramp greased with mash, and finally, the Mr. Potato contest. That's to find the person whose head looks most like a potato. <laughs> The British female potato wrestling champions are Lisa Donner and Yanka Hanzaloba, two women wrestling in a giant vat of mashed potato. Rory would pay a lot of money to see that much mashed potato. <laughs> and at the end of that round... Hang on a I'll just say, be your own person before you decide whether to boo or cheer. They you? are being. <laughs> David's team have nine points. Hooray! And Gary's team have eight. <laughs> Guilty as charged, mate. <laughs> To watch them leave their seats and feel some sporting stars. Watch Jonathan attempt to get his tongue around his arms. <laughs> my lovely little gal, yes, I do have a tongue, a long bovine tongue, all waspy and ready to please. Ladies, the queue forms on the left. <laughs> and first in the queue, David Gower. Look. <laughs> Can I just 
just check something. You're in Panto. Thank you. That's right. Which one are you in? Um, Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Three beers. And you're not playing Goldilocks. That would be ambitious casting. I'm not one of the beers as well, Jonathan. Why are you playing in it? I'm playing the ringmaster, Jonathan. No, I know Goldilocks, and I don't remember a ringmaster. I don't remember. You know, I remember the bed. I remember the porridge. I don't remember who's been introducing my circus acts. Were you not in a panto when you were Michael Bowen? Um, I was in the panto when I first started out as a panto, but it didn't come out then. And I know, am I safe to assume out. that on that particular occasion, he would have been the ringmaster? Uh, <laughs> that would be around them, yeah, yeah. That would be like one panto when you'd really want the crowd to shout out, he's behind you! No, you. <laughs> <laughs> they did, they did. Several occasions. <laughs> it is indeed time now to go all touchy-feely as we play Feel the Sportsman, Gary and Rory, your first this week. Gary, I'm not just saying this, but you actually, you can get away with that hat. You should wear, you should wear that on Match of the Day one week. <laughs> they mock my bad toe, look at that. Can you get this on? <laughs> you take your hat off first. Or you can roll it down from the top as if you're putting it on a banana. <laughs> can we have our first mystery guest, please? And your time starts now. Come on here. <laughs> Some fairy bits down. Is it Gail? Is it Gail, is it Gail come down? <laughs> oh, he's got the sack. Viali. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, of. It's Anne Robinson, my old friend, isn't it? <laughs> We're going to want his name, by the way. They told me you were dead. Santa. 20 years. Yeah, we're going to want his name, though. Oh, Father Christmas. Yes, but Santa more. Claus. Oh, it's the Father Christmas. Um, Jürgen Rosenberg. Jürgen. 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 I'm going to give you that. That's close enough. Three right. points. Well done. They're sharp. Right, name, They're sharp. Yeah. <laughs> okay, David and Jonathan, if you'd like to take your positions, please. <laughs> and the nice thing is, it works as well. Look. <laughs> okay, blindfolds on, please. <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. <laughs> What's going on there? You'll have to get closer. What's that? What's that? <laughs> Is this... <laughs> I just remembered you plugged in. Oh, shit. It's like, I'm going to while he's lunchbox. You know what? I think it's a bit too much salt and not quite enough quick enough. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. Oh, no. I've got one. Mash, David, what do you normally have with mash? Oh, uh, pie and liquor. You have the pie, I'll take you the other one. Yeah, I'll give you three points. It's over. Well done. You got it. Take 
credit cards. <laughs> Actually, I think I think we need a retake because I slipped a little bit. <laughs> Oh, Take that to the canteen, bubble and squeak to I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> oh, Panto Joe. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have 12. <laughs> and Gary's team have 11. for me to go and join the fairy hunt. The last one left for me to rhyme's that fat, big, hairy Rory. <laughs> Thank you. We inch our way ever closer to the new year by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is David's team. As many names as you can Just in 90 seconds. Hold on. And your time <sighs> starts now. Uh, OK, a French footballer, um, he, he doesn't wash his pants. We heard about him earlier. Uh, what Yes. Oh, okay, uh, um, first up, you know when you go to a top restaurant and yeah. you, you're not wearing anything around your neck and they a say you tie? can't come here unless you put... A tie. tie. You, uh, and what do you have to put it? Dicky. He's a boxer. He bit your nipples. Tyson. <laughs> first name. Tyson, sir. Tyson, Tyson, yeah, yeah. Same. First name. name. Like he doesn't know his well, first name. He may not do. The guy beat seven shades of shit out of him with his first <laughs> name. <laughs> this one is uh, first name. The second name is it's a very posh uh, part of America. It's, it's very famous for its grassy knoll and the book depository. Arizona? No. <laughs> Although I'm sure they've got a lovely book depository. Oh, this was a big it was a big show. It had J.R. in it as the bad guy in the 70s. It was a big kind oh, of... Oh, Jay thing. Simpson? No. <laughs> J.R. J.R. Yeah. He, uh, he was the bad guy. Dennis? Yeah. Yes. Well, no, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a rugby yeah. league player. His first name is... Um, Brett, 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 Brett. The second name is... Um, if we were kind about you and we didn't say your hair was the colour of monkey piss, we yeah. would say that you had gone... Blonde. You had gone... Blonde. You had gone... Grey. Okay, and the silver, second name is... Some people nice. don't like a turkey Christmas. They like this bird instead. Goose. Uh, goose, grey goose. Yeah. And the first name would be... Um, there was a famous uh, film star called James... Cagney? Yep, and it was another one. <laughs> Actually, you're right, I'm wrong there. Yeah? <laughs> he was like, can you tell me a Marlon Brando? D, there you yeah, go, D. Yeah. Oh, this one. Oh. <laughs> I think anybody who's been at home over Christmas playing games with their grandparents will know exactly how Jonathan feels. <laughs> <laughs> Pass those along to Rory, please, yeah, Amit. Thank you very much. Uh, and your time starts <laughs> now. The ringmaster in Goldilocks and Three Bears at Milton Keynes Theatre. Milton Keynes. Bruno. Frank Bruno. Tickets on sale. <laughs> this is uh, the first name. It's footballer, plays for Liberia. Uh, speech at Christmas. Ray. Christopher Ray. Queen. Queen, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, first name, as in the, uh, Where? In the 60s pop group, Somebody and the Pacemakers. Jerry. Jerry Ray Queen. Hey, well remembered, Jerry Queen. Come on. Uh, Iran's most famous footballer. Ali Barbie Dye. Ali Dye. Very. <laughs> One of them. There's many of them. <laughs> I know. I know. A gladiator played by Russell Crowe in the film that you starred in. You know that the character Russell Crowe played. Maxim uh, Maximus. Maximus. Was the the tenth in, in Latin. Maximus. Decimus. X. Very good. Yes. Yeah. 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 To do with the oh, um, to do with the zero thing at Greenwich is the zero. Why don't you bend the card over so you can see the question? Yeah, the, the line of longitude yes. which goes through Greenwich is called a... Bend the card over, go on. Greenwich means line of longitude. Uh, and it's very clever. Meridian, get on Any, the, Meridian, Meridian, thank you, yeah, that'll do. Meridian. Meridian. Uh, this is a baseball pitcher. First name was born in the manger. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the second name is, is if you were serving in your restaurant, if you were serving potato in your restaurant, it would be chips. If you have potato and cauliflower, it's something gobby. Get gobby! Get gobby! Hello, old herd, old women are talking this. Get on with it, come on! This is the strongest man in the world. First Jeff Capes. <laughs> it's so close, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> ah. So 
so the scores are tied and that means a tie break. I know, boys and girls, there's a big vat of mashed potato here. How about getting Gary and David to wrestle in mashed potato? Shall we do it? Gentlemen, please. You have 45 seconds to wrestle, and the winner will be decided in true Panto tradition by our audience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the time starts now, and you get. Go on, Captain. Go on, Captain. Come on, Captain. Go on, Captain. Go on, Captain. Go on, Captain. Go on, Captain. Well done. So, audience, okay, audience, I want you to cheer if you thought Gary. If you thought David won. Yeah. So I declare Gary yeah. Senior. Yeah. He's not worth it, Gary. He's not worth it. Oh, I wonder why no one threw anything at Frank. <laughs> you know, looking around here, this reminds me of my bedroom when I was about 14. <laughs> no girls. Just need no girls. I'll be back next Christmas time, and so will all our panel. Though I'll be on the BBC, and then the shopping channel. <laughs> our thanks go to David, Jonathan and Frank, Gary, Rory and Omid, and to our fairy Gail Porter. We're all off to take our costumes off, except Frank, who has to wear his for another month. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Happy Christmas. <laughs>